With accurate measurements of your body, the pants will have a more custom fit that will be ideal for your body type. You'll need your widest hip, waist, pants length and crotch measurements. Let's go through a quick calculation. For a pants sloper, we have both a front and a back crotch, so we have to divide the crotch by 2. My crotch is 32 inches and that should give me 16 inches. To get the front crotch, I'm going to subtract 2 from 16 inches to get 14 inches and I'm going to add 2 to 16 inches to get 18 inches for my back crotch. To make the sloper more versatile, I'm going to break it up to indicate where my thigh, knee and hip are. And for those, I took measurements of my waist to knee, knee to widest hip and knee to calf. Please feel free to pause this video and review the list. I'll have a free checklist for you in the description box, that way you won't miss anything. Now, let me introduce the master pattern for a pant sloper. This is a back pattern. Upon first glance, it looks like a lot, but it's really not. The first thing you will notice is the shape of the back pants with its darts at the waist and the grain line. But when you look closely, you see many numbers on both sides of the waist as well as plotting points that go all around the pattern from the center back line of the pattern to the widest hip on the side of the pattern. You should also see plotting points at the dart. Those are used to plot the dart into the pattern based on the crotch measurements. Except for the fact that the front pants are different from the back, there's really no difference in the front pattern. You will notice the same features on the front as well as the back. It's important to start off this draft with the back pattern because the back makes use of the back crutch measurement, but the front makes use of both the back and the front crutch measurements. After the tracing paper goes onto the master pattern, we should be pretty much ready to start. Plot the back crutch measurements on both sides of the waist. First, you have to locate your waist measurements on the waistline. My waist is 27, that's in between 26 and 28, so I have to find the center and draw a guideline through and upwards. Then. Let's locate the measurements for my back crutch. Back crutch measurements is 18 inches in my case. Once I find it, the next thing is to draw a guideline through to intersect with the guideline I drew from my waist. We should repeat this process on the other side of the waist. The two points I'm highlighting with the marker are points for my waistline. I'm going to connect the dots with a straight line and move on to the waist dart. Since this is the back pattern, I should locate the back crutch measurements of 18 inches in the dart space and mark it. Mm -hmm. 
Then, I'll have to plot the widest hip measurement of 37 inches all around the pattern, even at the hemline of the pants. This is a crutch curve, and guess what, it's used to draw crutches. It has a side designated to drawing front crutch, and a side for drawing the back crutch. The side for the back crutch has a bunch of numbers. What you need to do here is to select the widest hip measurement from these numbers and point that number to your back crutch point. Then draw the curve. For now, I'm going to use the hip curve to draw the curve from the waistline to the widest hip point, which is the first dot after the waistline, and then I'll extend this down to the end of the curve. After this, I'm going to use the see-through rule to connect the remaining dots to the hemline of the side of this pant. Moving on to the center back of the pattern. I'm going to connect the waistline and the next dot with the hip curve. Then I'm going to use the crutch curve to connect the dots in the crutch. After I locate my widest hip measurement of 37 inches, I'm going to point 37 at the back crutch point and then I'll draw the curve to meet the rest of the back crutch line. the hip curve, I'll connect the crutch points downwards to meet the next two points and connect all the dots with the see-through rule. to measure from the waist towards the hemline of the pants to get the pant length of 40 inches. Then I'll put a mark at 40 inches and draw a straight line across to indicate the hemline of the pant. Now I have 
have to add the hem allowance. I recommend 2 inches, but you can make it any length you want. The next thing to do is to put the notches at the side of the hip and at the center back crotch line. Unlike the basic shift dress block, the pants pattern does not come with hip and crotch notches. You have to put them in yourself. I'm going to put two notches at the hip and one notch at the center back. For my hip notches, I'm going to place them 5 inches from the waistline and put them half an inch apart. To differentiate the two, I'm going to place my center back crotch line notch at 3 inches. Remember to trace in the green line. The fun fact about master patterns is that the entire process is a plot and trace game. I don't know about you but I've always loved plotting and tracing. After tracing the green line from the master pattern onto the new block, the pattern should be labeled back basic straight leg pant and then it's done. the front. Like I said earlier, the front and back are virtually the same, except for the shape of the crutches. It has plotting points just as the back does, and everything else is the same. Plot the back crotch measurements on the center front side of the waist that's in line with the crotch. I'm going to locate my waist measurements on the waistline. My waist is 27 inches, that's in between 26 and 28, so I have to find the center and draw a guideline through and upwards. Let's locate the measurements for my front crotch. The front crotch measurement based on our calculation is 18 inches. Once I find that, the next thing to do is to draw a guideline through to intersect with the guideline I drew from my waist. Then, let's locate the measurement for my back crotch. The back crotch measurement is 18 inches. Once I find that, the next thing to do is to draw a guideline through to intersect with the guideline I drew from my waist. The two points I'm highlighting with the marker are points for my waistline. I'm now going to connect the dots with a straight line and move on to the waist dart. Since this is the front pattern, I should locate the front crotch measurements of 14 in the dart space and mark it.
Then, I have to plot the widest hip measurement of 37 inches all around the pattern, even at the hemline of the pants. I'm going to connect the two dots at the front crotch using the front part of the crotch curve. With the see-through rule, I'm going to connect the crotch to the waist. And with the hip curve, I'll connect the waist to the first two hip points and connect all the others with the see-through rule. to measure from the waist towards the hemline of the pants to get the pants length of 40 inches. Then I'll put a mark at 40 inches and draw a straight line across to indicate the hemline of the pants. Now I have to add the 2 inches hem allowance so it matches with the back pattern. The next thing to do is to put in the notches at the sides of the hip and at the center front crotch line. I'm going to draw in the grain line. For my hip notches, I'm going to place them 5 inches from the waistline to match the back hip line notches and put them half an inch apart. In the same way, I'm going to place the center front crotch line notch at three inches to match the center back notch. To mark my knee line, I'm going to measure 23 inches from the waist Once the knee is indicated 8 inches above the knee line is the thigh and 5 inches below the knee line is my calf.
At this point, the pattern should be labeled front basic straight leg pants pattern and then it's done as well. I forgot to break up the back pattern, so I'm going to do that before I wrap up. So, feel free to alter these patterns when creating any type of pants and jumpsuits and have fun sewing. Don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe so you don't miss a video from the Sewing Studio GH. I'll leave free downloadable checklists and the procedure for this draft in the description box. That way, you can do these drafts easily. Please send questions, comments and suggestions for other videos you want to watch on this channel in the comment section or DM me on Instagram. I can't wait to hear from you. Take care.